Hello, YouTube. This is your girl, Comica Boom, broadcasting live from the Boom Boom Room. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I get, oh, excuse me, I guess I will talk about this. You know, Tupac Shakur, he's someone who is very sacred to me. And a lot of people who I hold sacred in my heart, I do not really do a lot of talking about on this platform. And I really want to preserve the sanctity of Tupac Shakur. And I appreciate his contributions and I love his spirit. And I feel like I, in so many ways, I share the same spirit of Sh Tupac Shakur. I got a little bit of thug in me. And, you know, a lot of people got the thug thing all mixed up. When Tupac Shakur was talking about thug life, a lot of people took that as uh, meaning saggy pants, being a bum, uh, gang banging, banging out, and all of this and all of that. That's not what Tupac meant. And I'm so glad that before he left, he was able to clarify that. And for those of you that are not aware, you know, he was t talking about thug life being a, a way of life. It was a mindset. It was a, a way of being in defiance of the system. That was thug life to be short. That's the edited short version of it. Thug life is not being a bum. It's not being ghetto and wretched and loud and sagging your pants. That's not the thug life that... That Tupac was talking about. And um, I appreciate Tupac's music. I appreciate Tupac's um, contrib contribution to the arts as far as his acting goes. He was a phenomenal actor. And it's a shame that he did not see um, the... I would say the the limits of where his talents could go. But the little bit that we did get to see of Tupac, it was amazing. And had he been allowed to live, man, can you imagine what Tupac would have did up until this point? Can you imagine his music catalog, what it would have sounded and looked like at this point? Can you imagine if he had been alive to open the restaurant that he was um, dreaming of opening? I don't have that book right now. I have it in my storage. But one day, if I can remember, I'm going to show you that book that I treasure. It's a book that has a lot of his writings and his dreams and his ideas and his music in it. Oh my God, it's, it's so nice. And I don't really trust a lot of this material that's coming out um, since Tupac and his mom has died because a lot of people are trying to uh, cash out at his expense and I don't trust them just like I don't trust all this music and all this madness that's coming out about Prince and Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston and blah, blah, blah. I don't trust them. And you know that anybody can duplicate anything, anything, anybody can produce anything and say that it's authentic. You know, where is the proof of that? And, you know, I really don't have a lot of respect for people who would try and succeed to make a dollar at the expense of somebody else's talent. It's called robbery. That's what it is. And, you know, so many people have tried to exploit Tupac. So many people have disrespected Tupac. So many people have slandered Tupac's name and his character. And it really hurts me really bad. And if Tupac was here to defend himself, their asses would be beat the fuck down. Tupac would not stand for it. And see, they're doing this because they know Tupac is past and he's not here to defend himself. So they feel compelled to, to feel like it's okay to shit on a man who cannot defend himself. And to hate on a dead man who cannot defend his honor. You are really the most awful person on the planet as far as I'm concerned. 
and I do not respect you at all in any capacity and I feel like a piece of shit holds more value than you who would do that I really do and I understand that there are a lot of people who envy Tupac and they thought that they could kill him when they shot the bullet inside of him but you only made his name greater when you did that we don't know who did it, but a lot of people do. And maybe the, that person or those persons are still alive. Maybe they're dead. I don't know. But that just shows you the capacity of the disease of jealousy, of envy, and how it can affect such awesome people and awesome talent and how it can rob us of a society of the gifts that would otherwise have the potential to manifest and bless the earth and bless the people in the earth. And, you know, Tupac Shakur, he was multi-talented. He wasn't just one one dimensional he he just wasn't uh didn't have a facet of a one particular gift he was multi talented and you know the world was just starting to see his light and his glow from his light when he was passed and i remember when um it was announced that he passed i can remember it just like it was yesterday I was crazy about Tupac and I'm still crazy about Tupac and I still listen to his music. And it's not one particular song that I like more than the other. I don't have a favorite. I love all of his music equally. And I could not pick just one particular song if you asked me to, to be my favorite. I love all of his music equally. And I remember when it was announced that he had died man it still hurts it still hurts it's still fresh i never accepted it i never really processed it i it, it's like i i'm still stuck in that moment in time i have not moved in time since i heard that and it was like i was in shock when i was told that he had died and I still cannot process that in my mind. I still cannot process it. I do not accept it. I don't. And I never will. And, you know, my neighbor, a young girl who lived across the street, she knew how much I was crazy about Tupac. Everybody that knew me personally, they knew how much I loved Tupac. And when she told me that, it's, it's like... I was numb. I fell numb. I was lying on my bed and she came into my bedroom and told me, did you hear about Tupac? And I'm like, no, what? And I was looking through my magazines. I had my pop culture posters, salt and pepper and all of them on my walls. I had Tupac on my wall. You know how us teenagers do. We have all these posters of our favorite um, artists and entertainers and celebrities all over our walls. And I, oh, I love my walls like that. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do my walls like that when I start my show. And I was looking, probably looking through Write On or Word Up Magazine, you know, Cynthia, Cynthia, what is her name? Cynthia. Damn, I forgot her name. Cynthia Horner. She was the editor or the publisher of Word Up Magazine and Write On Magazine. I used to love that fucking magazine. Every time I go to the store, I had to go to the store every week to get a new copy. I was looking forward to a new copy and I had a mass, a, a collection of the magazines. And I don't know why I threw them away. Man, they will be worth a lot right now, right? Man, I'm going to try to see if I can go on Amazon and see if I can get some copies of somebody. You know, somebody's always holding on to some stuff. I'm going to see if I can get some copies of those magazines because that's a treasure. That's a landmark treasure right there, right? So, and that's sort of like the benchmark of our hip-hop community. And, um, man, that would be awesome if we could start like a hip-hop museum 
and have like a, a Word Up magazine and uh, Write On magazine. I love those magazines. And, you know, um, what was the name of the other magazines? Benzino had started one. There were so many of them. But um, that was my favorite, Write On and Word Up. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> man, I look forward to those magazines and see, oh, I love that. And see, that's what started me early on having such a passion for the pop culture and hip hop and being interested in the celebrity lives. I was always into that stuff. And Jamie Foster Brown, I loved her interviews. And Sister to Sister, Sister to Sister Magazine, oh, I look forward to all of that. Oh, you can't tell me nothing about the magazines, honey. And the interviews with the celebrities and keeping up with them and all of this and all that and their business. I was in their business big time. And I stayed into Tupac's business and he's dating this person and secretly married that person when he got out of jail. Where is she at now? I don't know. But um, I was so hurt. And I, ah, oh, that, that hurt. It's like it echoed and ricocheted in me when my neighbor, the young girl across the street came and told me and I was looking in the magazine or doing something. I wasn't looking right at her when she said it. And she was like, did you hear about what happened to Tupac? I was like, no, I thought she was going to say he fucked somebody up in the street or popped a cop in his head or something. You know, because <laughs> it was always spinning in the camera and spinning in somebody's face and, and letting somebody know how it's going to be and letting them have it. I love that fire in him. I love that lying in him. Oh, oh. That revolutionary spirit, that king, that oh, that king, that Kong. I love that in him. And then he could be soft like a lion and kiss you like a feather. Oh, 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 I love him. Still do. I forever will. It won't stop. And when I asked her, I said, no, what happened? And she, when she told me that he had died, I looked at her and I said, what did you say? And she repeated it. And I was waiting for her to tell me that she was joking. She was pranking me. You, you're bullshitting me, right? And she did not crack a smile. And I looked at her again. And I said, you're, you're lying to me. Tell me it's not true. And she said, no, I'm not lying. I'm not playing. They just announced it on the radio. You didn't hear it? I said, no. So I turned on the radio and there it was. It was all over the radio stations. And I felt like I wanted to just knock the fucking radios off the planet as hard as I could. And just tear into whoever was responsible for this. What the fuck is going on? Are you kidding me right now? That's how I was feeling. And I could not believe it. What the fuck? Are you, are you really telling me that he's not going to get up off of that gurney? Are you telling me? I mean, he's gotten shot so many times before and he got up. So you, are you really serious? He's not going to get up. So, they were saying, you know, he was in a coma or something. And I remember just praying to God. Praying to God. Hoping. Looking. Watching the news. Watching everything. Keeping up with the updates. I could not do anything. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't eat. I couldn't, I couldn't take a bath. I couldn't do anything because I had to keep up. I was looking at the news. Hoping and waiting for them to say, he made it through. He's alive. He cheated death again. But that never happened. The next report after those so many days, I think it was 13 days or something like that, they said that he had died.
and my life has never been the same. And I have I have really struggled to deal with that. And I don't think I have listened with the same intensity and the same passion to any Tupac song since. I could not let the radio play again any more Tupac songs. Because everything was compromised at that time. From that point on, everything was fucked up. It was chaos. It was disorder. And I could not fathom listen at another Tupac song without Tupac here. And I respect Jasmine Guy sharing her experiences with Tupac and I haven't heard her come out lately and she probably feels the same way that I do. It's sacred. It's very sacred and it's not to be compromised. It's not to be contaminated. It's not to be exploited. It's not to be used to get attention for and all of this and all that. Like I feel in some ways, not totally, but in some ways I feel like that's what Jada Pinkett has been doing. And I want you to stop it, Jada. If that's what you're doing this about and you're trying to allude to the possibility of you having a sexual uh, situation with Tupac and it was more than what it really was. I want you to stop it, Jada. And I mean, I, I, I respect Jada for protecting Tupac's name and, and the embodiment of, of, of the, the sanctuary of Tupac, if you will. I respect her for defending his honor and standing up for him while he's laying down and he can't defend himself. I respect that, Jada. But it's sort of crossing the line when it she adds this tone to it, this intimacy. And if that's what it is, Jada, say that's what it is. But I don't feel like Jada is wanting to say this what it is because that may not be what it is and she does not want to feel the, the discomfort of lying on Tupac because she cannot bear the weight of that guilty consciousness. If she does that, if she throws that out there, it's put out into the atmosphere. And see, Jada is smart. Jada is a very spiritual person and she understands the implications of that and the repercussions of that. So she goes so far with it and then she pulls it back. And I want you to stop it, Jada. If that's what you're trying to allude to and that's not what it is, please stop. And even if that's what it is, stop, Jada. Stop and just celebrate Tupac for what he is and, and, and let the rest be something that you deal with in private. Protect his honor and defend his name and don't compromise the game. Don't participate in the game because it's a game that's being played at the expense of Tupac's name. And I, I don't like it. And I don't like how allegedly John Singleton, how dare you, John, if, if you really did this and I believe you did, I believe it's true. How dare you propose this scene and they say that he was supposed to be a part of the Tupac biopic before he was fired. I don't know why he was fired. Maybe he was fired for being a piece of shit. And even proposing this fucked up ass scene. Whereas Tupac was supposed to have gotten gang raped in prison. The imagination can go too fucking far. And you as a brother, John Singleton, you big Ewok head. 
almost Down syndrome looking motherfucker who we gave a pass to when a lot of your your, your projects was kind of on the wack side. We gave you a fucking pass because you was a fucking brother and we wanted to support black business and help you be built up. But now you done went too fucking far. You done crossed the fucking line. When you go and use your imagination to desecrate the institution of somebody uh, of the life of Tupac Shakur, Shakur, excuse me, I can smell the Jew behind you, John. And it's, it's a disgrace that that nigga in the window is so easily bought that you would put your brother, your dead brother, under the motherfucking bus. The way that you wanted to do. And then the fact that you... You were fired off the fucking movie and then you still gonna come behind from behind the veil and still put this shit out there. So that lets me know that you proud of this. You proud of this, huh, John? You proud of this garbage ass shit. This disrespect. So you just gonna put it in our face anyway, huh, John? And I'm so fucking glad. I'm so fucking glad and I salute Daz Dillinger of the Dog Pound, no matter how big his body get, he's still talented and he's still my brother. And I thank him and I salute, I salute Daz for defending the honor of Tupac Shakur and telling John on social media, on Instagram. And I wish that uh, Daz would tell you to your face, John, you big bus head motherfucker. I wish he would tell you to your face. And let you have it like you need it. On Daz's, Daz Dillinger's uh, Instagram page, I saw the screenshot where he told John that Tupac would whoop his ass if he was alive. Yeah, he would whoop your ass. He would whoop your ass good. He mopped the motherfucking pavement with your ass, you corny bitch. How dare you? And I'm wondering what does Tyreek... Tyrese feel about this, Tyrese Gibson, because he's crazy about Tupac too. And he really, really, really has been posting some real good stuff about Tupac and reminiscing about Tupac. And he was close to John and he's done some projects with John. So I'm wondering, is this going to sever their ties? Has he pulled John to the side and had some conversations with John? I, the the conversations need to be placed. This man has gotten out of out of pocket, and he 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 needs to be you know he needs to be reprimanded. Some things you just don't do. You're out of order, John. You way out of order. And then to even entertain, they said allegedly and reportedly, he, it was rumored that John even wanted to write into the script. To make Tupac Shakur's mother a lesbian character in the movie. My God, my God. A revolutionary. Somebody who fought, helped to fight for your stupid ass, John. So you can even have the opportunities that you are allowed to experience right now. You, you, you so far gone. You so far gone with your disrespect, John. My God. Even white people wouldn't do this to their own kind. Nobody but a stupid, a money-hungry nigga. You willing to put your own brother under the bus and desecrate his legacy for a fucking dollar. You stupid garbage-ass dude. You a stupid-ass dude. And I pray that none of your projects see the light of day and nobody supports your shit. For the rest of your existence on earth until you make amends and you make atonement for this shit. You, this, we can't let this ride. We cannot let this ride. This is so far gone and so far to the left and so far wrong. And if that wasn't enough disrespect. The nigga still came on social media bashing the people that bashed him and had a problem with him putting that bullshit ass script together. 
he, he, he feel like we supposed to be okay with the disrespect. Nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of here. And see, so many of these motherfuckers, they, they so disrespectful. They so far gone with the disrespect bag. They hold nothing sacred. They don't hold nothing of value because they ass don't have any value in themselves. So they don't have a problem disrespecting Tupac. And then, not only disrespecting Tupac, but then you're going to disrespect his mama? Nigga! Some things you just don't do. Some things you just don't do, John Singleton. Some things you just don't motherfucking do. No, I haven't seen the Tupac movie. And I have no, absolutely no interest in seeing it. Because, you know, somebody can go and make the depiction. And then I have a problem with how his mom died. Coincidentally, his mom dies right before you all do this movie. I'm kind of suspicious of that. And then, you know, I don't know who is in charge of his estate. If it's his sister, I don't know. And then they done started selling some of his stuff. And then here come this white bitch. Madonna, who is notorious for trying to exploit and ride black celebrity dick for her self-promotion, in my opinion. I'm so sick of this old whore. Here she is, coming out of, out of nowhere, the garbage can. Here she go, climbing out of the garbage can, talking about this letter that Tupac wrote her, the breakup letter, and she's trying to put it on the auction block. Everybody trying to make a motherfucking dollar. Everybody trying to get in where they fit in because Tupac is trending more than ever right now. He's worth more in death than he was in life. And then here comes somebody. Oh, this is the house that Tupac was just about to buy. It's, a, it's for sale for $2.5 million. And blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick of these motherfuckers. I mean, that just showed me how much more awful they can be as time progresses. And I'm just sick of it. It makes me want to vomit. It makes me want to vomit. And, you know, I don't respect the movie. You know, a lot of these people of this generation, they didn't know anything about Tupac, so maybe they could benefit from it. But, you know, for someone like me, you know, I can't, I can't respect it. I don't want to see it. Because I lived through that era and I know about a lot of things that happened and they left a lot of the most valuable parts of his life out of the movie conveniently and they only want to show what they want to show and those are the parts that are not doing him in, in, in his name justice in my opinion. You know, they only want to focus on the bad and the most controversial parts and aspects of his life. And, you know, they have that right to do that. But it's at, at the same time, I feel like if you're going to um, show the man, celebrate the man and his accomplishments, don't just, you know, press on the unfavorable aspects of his life and um, compromise his legacy at the same time. And I feel like that's what's happening. And, you know, you know, whoever wants to see it, you can see it. But I have no interest in looking at it. And I do not respect the um, franchise. I am not interested in listening at any other music that anyone would put out since he has passed. Because it, it doesn't have his approval. And, you know, I'm not going to disrespect Tupac. And... I wouldn't dare disrespect his mom. I am so thankful for her, for what she did after he passed. As far as building the museum, I've been wanting to go to Georgia for some time to visit the museum. And I wanted to go. I was really looking forward to going before she passed. And it's very unfortunate that I did not get to go to the museum when she was alive. But I still do want to go and visit the museum. And, um, you know, he touched so many people's lives in so many miraculous ways. And I am just so grateful for Tupac Shakur.
there will never be another. And I am so grateful that I was able to experience Tupac in my lifetime. And um, that's pretty much what I have to say. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. I'll let you girl. Peace.